In this lecture, we will talk about the epidemiology of specific bacterial outbreaks in hospital setting. Three bacterial outbreaks we'll talk about. These include Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Legionella pneumophilia, Burcoderia sebacea. First one is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, the organism is uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, it, is, it is causing one of the most important infections in the history. It is tuberculosis. Uh, and uh, every year, 10 million people are newly diagnosed with, the, the, uh, with tuberculosis. Uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, due to the presence of uh, uh, effective drugs, the, uh, the, the level of tuberculosis or the burden of tuberculosis is decreasing uh, a little bit every year. Uh, the high risk group include patients who live in uh, damp, overcrowded places, patients uh, who have immune system problem like uh, M uh, HIV and immunocompromised patients as well as healthcare workers. For healthcare workers, when they are exposed to open bacterial, uh, open TB uh, in a patient area, uh, there is also uh, bacterial resistance, uh, uh, TB resistance to some antibacteria, uh, anti-TB medications. That's why we have multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. And this is by itself is a big challenge. If you look at this uh, map, uh, uh, Africa, uh, especially uh, Eastern and South Africa, and uh, Asia, especially India and Southeastern Asia, uh, they have a very high uh, level of uh, TB, and the lowest TB level is in the uh, North America, uh, Western Europe, and Australia. A uh, hospital uh, outbreak of uh, tuberculosis can happen among healthcare workers and patients. Uh, of course, due to exposure to open TB patients in uh, patient area. Uh, the clinical signs and symptoms for TB is very specific. Uh, there is cough or continuous resistant cough for treatment for at least three weeks. And in addition to cough, there is hemoptysis, which is coughing of blood, chest pain during breathing or coughing, uh, anorexia, uh, fatigue, fever, night sweat, and chills. Night sweat is very characteristic uh, for uh, TB patient. Extra pulmonary TB will depend on the site. So maybe uh, there is abscess in, uh, in the brain, there is hematuria in the bladder, uh, according to the site is the symptom. Diagnosis is by finding a positive culture for mycobacterium tuberculosis or positive microscopic examination for acid fast bacilli. Uh, demonstration of uh, tu uh, tuberculosis complex uh, nucleic acid uh, directly in the specimen and histology also. Mode of transmission is by airborne uh, transmission from open pulmonary TB or laryngeal uh, TB during coughing and sneezing. They uh, expel TB bacilli in the air and it is uh, uh, taken by uh, respiration uh, uh, for exposed people. Uh, people with extra pulmonary TB are not infectious, cannot transmit infection uh, to other people. People with latent TB are also not infectious. Latent TB, they don't have themselves any uh, symptoms, but they are TB positive. Bovine TB may also be transmitted from infected cattle to human uh, by ingestion of contaminated and pasteurized milk or milk products, or sometimes rarely by airborne droplets spread to the people who work closely with the cattle, like farmers and veterinarian people. The incubation period uh, of TB from the time of exposure 
uh, to the significant tuberculin test positive is two to 10 weeks. Uh, period of infectivity depends on the type of TB. For uh, adults with open pulmonary TB, they can be infectious uh, continuously or intermittently. Children under the age of 12 rarely infectious. Once uh, the person with pulmonary TB has been starting treatment for TB, usually it takes two to four weeks to become not infectious. Uh, as we said, uh, extra pulmonary and latent TB are not infectious. Prevention and control of TB, uh, there is WHO multimodal infection control strategy uh, consists of combination of intervention design uh, to minimize and prevent the risk of tuberculosis uh, transmission in healthcare setting. Uh, there is administrative control, uh, triage, so similar to the triage we do for respiratory diseases, uh, the purpose of this triage is to minimize the exposure of other patients uh, before diagnosis of uh, case of TB. Isolation and air burn precaution, this is the most important uh, um, item uh, for open TB uh, and uh, open pulmonary or laryngeal uh, TB. Uh, the issue is this, we need the isolation and, and, and airborne precaution very early to prevent the spread of organism uh, to other patients. Uh, also, once you detect the case, you should start treatment early because within two to four weeks, treated patients become not infectious. Other respiratory prevention and control measures include respiratory hygiene, like covering your mouth and nose during coughing and sneezing, uh, educating and training healthcare workers, environmental control, uh, ensure that the ventilation system is safe, either natural, mechanical, or mixed, uh, or even recirculated air, but after installing HIPAA filters, uh, using uh, germicidal ultraviolet system, uh, personal respiratory protection uh, by uh, using uh, particulate respirators uh, N95 and FFB2, which are types of masks that prevent air transmission, airborne transmission, uh, and uh, better to do respiratory respirator fit testing uh, to make sure uh, it's working right. For prevention, fortunately, there is a vaccine for uh, TB. Uh, it's called BCG vaccine. It's a live attenuated uh, mycobacterium bovis uh, from cattle that protect against tuberculosis and protection uh, moderate, 50 to 56 to protection, uh, 56 protection against severe uh, TB forms like TB meningitis. Uh, it is given uh, in most of the countries as part of a childhood immunization in after birth uh, and uh, in high risk occupations like healthcare workers, especially lab personnel. Uh, however, BCG is not generally recommended for the use uh, in many low risk countries like USA or UK. Uh, so several countries in the world uh, find it not, not important to give BCG vaccine. And this is uh, a photo of BCG vaccine. Another photo for tuberculosis outbreak. The next bacterial outbreak that we'll uh, discuss today is Legionella pneumophilia. Uh, the pathogen is a gram-negative bacteria, uh, can live uh, and grow in water system, even at a uh, higher temperature like 20 to 50, uh, up to 50 uh, degrees. Uh, uh, and Legionella can survive and grow uh, in the parasites like uh, protozoa uh, and within the biofilm that uh, cover the lining, uh, the inside lining of water system. So Legionella, Legionnaire disease is a severe type of pneumonia. 
uh, it is typically acquired by inhalation of contaminated water. So here, the water is contaminated with Legionella, and there is a few droplets or mist of this water spreading in the air. Somebody inhaled this and get the Legionnaire disease. Uh, hospital acquired Legionnaire disease usually originate in hospital water system. The mortality rate is 5 to 10 percent and sometimes increase up to 80 percent in immunocompromised uh, patients. Uh, it, sometimes it's caused waterborne outbreak in the hospital when the water system in the hospital is contaminated with Legionella. And this is uh, a real uh, example of uh, a uh, water tank uh, that is contaminated with Legionella associated with hospital outbreak of Legionella. Symptoms uh, for severe pneumonia uh, especially happen in uh, older age for patients above 50 years, uh, current or former smokers uh, with uh, chronic lung disease like COPD, asthma, uh, people with weak immune system like HIV, cancer, uh, organ failure. Uh, there is two types of uh, pneumonic form and non-pneumonic form. The pneumonic form incubation period 2 to 16 days initially start with fever, loss of appetite, headache, malaise, lethargy, and then symptoms for respiratory system like cough and sometimes hemoptysis. Uh, the severity of the disease range from mild to rapidly fatal pneumonia, and there is uh, mortality due to multi-respiratory and uh, multi-organ failure. In non-pneumonic form, uh, it is acute self-limiting influenza-like disease, last uh, usually two to five days, and incubation period is short, about two days. The main symptoms like influenza, it's fever, chills, headache, malaise, and muscle pain. Uh, mortality is, uh, is low or not present. As you see here, Legionella can have my inhalation. This is the most common uh, form causing uh, pneumonia. And sometimes it uh, happen by uh, aspiration uh, due to drinking of contaminated water. Diagnosis by PCR testing, positive Legionella culture, and Legionella urinary antigen test. A mode of transmission, this is the waterborne disease. So uh, waterborne disease, uh, usually by inhalation, as we said, inhalation of contaminated water aerosol from uh, any water uh, device like uh, shower heads, uh, some medical equipment like respiratory devices, air condition, uh, cooling towers, hot tubs, uh, hot water tanks, heaters, complex plumbing, system hydrotherapy equipment, and water fountains. So all these uh, um, objects in the, in the hospital can create water aerosol that is contaminated with Legionella and can be inhaled and causing pneumonia. Less commonly, as we said, this can be done uh, by aspiration of uh, uh, contaminated uh, water. Uh, rarely, very rarely, it's from person to person transmission. Uh, this also describes where we can see uh, aerosol of contaminated Legionella in the, in the hospital and other uh, healthcare facilities like cooling tower, uh, hot tubs, decorative uh, fountain, mist machines and uh, water parks. Uh, of course, water parks in hotels and other uh, amusement areas. Uh, incubation period for Legionella is between two and six, uh, 16 days, usually five to six days. Uh, period of infectivity, as long as the contaminated water is used, uh, it become infected. Uh, for the prevention is to minimize Legionella growth in the complex hospital uh, water system and device uh, by doing several issues like water disinfection. Usually is not very successful because as we said, uh, the Legionella stay in the biofilm uh, 
uh, inner lining of the water system and sometimes in the protozoa. Uh, education of uh, healthcare workers about uh, the uh, areas of exposure and the risk of exposure, especially immunocompromised patients. Uh, provision of sterile water for immunocompromised patients. Uh, organizing a program for periodic cleaning and maintenance of the water system, especially showers, bath, and sinks. Uh, installing this infection system and or point of use filters on taps and shower heads in, in, in healthcare setting. Uh, shock treatment, and it consists of heating the water, flushing the system, and uh, using shock chlorination. Uh, and of course, avoiding uh, installation of other potential sources of infection, like as we said, decorative bowls and fountains. Uh, there is no vaccine for Legionella pneumophilia. Uh, the last bacteria can be responsible for hospital outbreak is Burkoderia sebacea. As you see in this photo, uh, uh, it can contaminate uh, some of the solutions uh, used in the hospital, like chlorhexidine solution. So, Burkoderia sebacea is a gram-negative bacteria found in the environment in soil and water, and has been linked to uh, outbreaks of healthcare-associated infection, and it's a contamina contaminants of medical products, uh, antiseptics, and disinfectants. Uh, in outbreak investigation, healthcare workers should look for the medical uh, product or solution uh, that is contaminated uh, with uh, Burkoderia to withdraw and destroy. Uh, it is sometimes responsible for hospital outbreaks that can be associated with uh, high mortality, uh, especially among immunocompromised patients. Uh, the symptoms will depend on the site affected. Usually, if this uh, solutions like antiseptic solution uh, is used uh, uh, through the skin and reach the blood, it can cause a bloodstream infection, which is usually manifested by fever, shells, hypotension, confusion, shortness of breath, and increased heart rate. And in case of the contamination, uh, through the mouth, like uh, using contaminated chlorhexidine in oral care, uh, there is a possibility of getting uh, uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia that is usually manifested by fever, uh, virulent tracheo, bro uh, tracheobronchial uh, secretion, uh, sputum, uh, new or progressive infiltrate on the chest radiograph, uh, uh, leukocytosis, uh, and fever. Uh, diagnosis by culture uh, of clinical and environmental specimen and uh, BCR testing. This is one uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, hospital outbreak that environmental specimen are very important. Uh, also, specimen from uh, uh, medical products. The transmission, as we said, through contaminated uh, medical products uh, using in uh, uh, antiseptic uh, as antiseptic solution or disinfectant uh, and uh, this is usually what started the outbreak later on when, we, when you have uh, uh, multiple patients uh, developing a pneumonia for example or bloodstream infection there there could be a possibility especially in pneumonia for person to person uh, through droplet uh, or direct contact transmission uh, so it usually to start with the cases uh, 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 exposed to contaminated products, uh, medical products, antiseptic and disinfectant, and later person to person. And the incubation period is nine days, usually between one day to three weeks. Uh, period of infectivity, it is unclear, but probably uh, as long as these contaminated medical products, antiseptic and disinfectants, are used, there is possibility of infection. So how we prevent and control Burkoderia? Stop using any remaining contaminant, contaminated uh, products, and, and this is the major issue. Uh, immediately destroy any unused products from the pharmacy, 
medical course, medication preparation area, patient care area, and you need also to inform other department to do the same. Uh, notify local and state health authorities of the implicated products so they can distribute this information to other hospital that is buying that, that are buying the same contaminated products like chlorhexidine, for example. Other measures based on the disease. So if the uh, pneumonia happens, so you need droplet precaution to avoid uh, person to person uh, uh, transmission, as well as contact precaution, including hand hygiene for bloodstream infection. There is no vaccine for Burkholderia sebacea. Thank you.